Hi, good morning. Oh, I, sorry, I forgot to hook up my microphone here. So good morning, happy Canada Day. It's, uh, it's a holiday here in Canada. It's to uh, celebrate our independence. So here we are on, uh, on July 1st and I'm here in my studio. As you can see, it is, it's a mess. Um, <laughs> I've, been, uh, I've been working a lot because um, when I get stressed, I tend to paint like all the time. So I've just been making stuff and making stuff and I'm, I'm running out of space. So it's time to start uh, selling some stuff and putting stuff on sale and trying to clear some, some work out of my home. And I'm really busy, so I don't have a lot of um, uh, shows scheduled for this year. So it's really very humid today and I'm really warm down here, but <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so uh, today I've decided to take 10 paintings that um, are inspired by Canada, the Canadian landscape, and I'm put them on my website at a reduced price, and I'm going to go through them with you now, and you can, uh, you can take a look at, at how where I live inspires what I've been, what I've been creating. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is share my screen here. Actually, no, that's not the first thing I'm going to do. <laughs> first thing I'm, I'm going to start going through the paintings and then I'll share my screen. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is put the link up. So I've got a link on my website, which is right, right there. It's, uh, it's coming through. This is the first time I've used this software to live stream. And I brought my big computer downstairs so I normally work on this during the week uh, because it has a much better camera than my crappy old laptop. And uh, um, trying to do this on my phone has uh, been a challenge with internet cutting in and out and stuff. So hopefully this will work better. <laughs> Who knows? Um, so uh, first at this link, I have set up a, a, a page where um so this is a page on my website at the link below and all the paintings that i'm going to be going through right now are on this website and um i've reduced the prices by 20 to 25 percent uh just to kind of you know <laughs> help help uh move things along a bit um with shipping being as expensive as it is and i include shipping to Canada and the continental US and my price. So I include the tax, I include the shipping, there's, this is the price that it is. Um, so I can't really reduce so much more than that because shipping has, has gotten like crazy expensive. So uh, you can go there and any of these have a buy now button. You can shop if you like or not. If you just wanna take a look and see what I've got, I'm gonna leave this link up for about a week and it is also posted uh, I posted it this morning on my Facebook page, so you can get it that way. Or if you're on my mailing list, you have an email from earlier in the week with the link on it. Okay, so uh, let's get started here, full screen. Um, let me put the comments up. If you're, I can't tell if anyone's online because it doesn't show me on this. So, uh, but I can see your comments. So if you put a comment in the comment thing, I will try to respond. I'm going to start, what am I gonna start with? Okay, I have two paintings on my list that were inspired by a trip. Ah, oh, there goes my microphone. Okay. <laughs> uh, a trip to Quebec. Um, a couple years ago, uh, it was pre-COVID. I, I don't even remember when it was, probably 2018. I went with my family, my husband, my mom, and my in-laws to uh, Gaspé in Northern Quebec. And then we went from there, we went to the Eastern Townships, which is, I have some family there. Um, so we went to visit that and we did a lot of hiking and, you know, just kind of sightseeing while we were there. And um, when I came back, I really, felt like I wanted to paint landscapes. So then I spent, I spent a while 
uh, just kind of exploring what the landscape could say to me. So uh, before that, I was painting all abstract. So the first couple that I did were really a lot more abstract than some of the later ones, which look, they're more recognizably landscapes. So this one is called the crashing waves. Um, so, oh, yes, this is the opposite. Okay, so I've got a bit of glare on this, but I've used um, uh, metallic bronze in there. Uh, and when we were hiking, this was it from the gas bay, we were hiking through, uh, it was a fairly advanced um, trail uh, that went to a waterfall. And the waterfall was kind of down into a gorge. And there was a really kind of frightening rope, uh, rope ladder type thing that you can crawl on the, uh, climb down on the rocks so you can see the waterfall. Uh, and the waterfall was absolutely stunning, but it was in this gorge, which was surrounded by trees and it was dark and moody and, and the water just kind of, and then down the river across the rocks. And it was, it was breathtaking. It was really amazing. And I can't even remember the name of the park. It was somewhere in the gas bay. <clears throat> we were in St. Simeon de Lac. Uh, I believe that was the name of the town. And it was a short drive from there. So it was quite far out. Um, but you can see that I've got some texture, some texture paste in here in areas. Uh, and it is, and the metallic bronze, it's very textured and it's uh, 10 by 10, one of my 100 squares. So it is on a uh, wood panel, wood, see? And um, it's got inch and a half sides. The sides are all painted black. It is signed on the side and it is wired on the back. So it's easy to hang, you just hang it up on your wall. And, um, and that's that one. So that one is, what is it on my other page? It is, uh, number four. I am not doing these in order, apparently. So, okay, this is number four, and um, it's called The Crashing Waves. And so that one was inspired by Quebec. This one is kind of from the same trip, but it is um, a different area. So there is a, uh, a place in the Eastern Townships, a little town called Kodakot, I can't even remember. They have a really high suspension bridge in a gorge and it was terrifying and amazing. And um, this was inspired by that. It's it's very abstract, obviously. Got the on um, either side of the bridge and this this would be representative of the bridge that um, that goes over the gorge. And so this also uses a metallic, although not bronze, this one uses copper. So there's copper and turquoise and there's, there's a bit of texture in there. I know it's a little bit hard to see with the glare, but um, so it's mixed media. I've used uh, some pencils, uh, graphite and paint and texturing medium. But yeah, I was quite happy with the way this turned out. It's, I'm trying now to, um, when I'm working on my botanical series, I'm trying to get my uh, my botanicals more abstract so that they're not as as representative, which when I was doing the landscapes, I kind of went the other way around. I started with the really abstract stuff and then I got progressively more representative as I went. Um, and I think that was probably because I just had, uh, had people going, that's a landscape. And it's like, yes, can't you see it? I can see it, it's totally a landscape. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next batch are kind of a little bit closer to home. I'm going to do the, the ones on paper. Um, so this one, this one is called In This Stillness. I'm going to take it out of the sleeve so you can see it. Um, this one is on paper and it is very, very textured. So it's a uh, nine by 12. Um, and it's on uh, a watercolor paper. And this one was inspired by a trip to a cottage up north. Uh, that's a Canadian thing. I don't know, like I know I have a lot of American followers, but 
Canadian thing to go to the cottage in the summer. <laughs> that, is, that is the thing to do. You will sit in traffic for three hours. It does not matter. You get there, you sit on the dock, you look at the lake and it's like, oh, <laughs> you can just, you can breathe. Um, and, you know, most people that live in the city, particularly in, in Toronto, go somewhere, they'll rent a cottage or they'll go to a friend's cottage or whatever. And uh, this was, this was, you know, looking, sitting on the dock, looking across the lake and seeing all the different colors too far away to actually see, you know, any kind of detail, any kind of leaves or trees or texture in the rocks and stuff. But, but you could see the colors. The colors are amazing. Um, and this is actually one of the first landscapes that I did. So it has, I don't know if you can tell, it has a lot of layers, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, a lot of uh, putting paint on and then scraping back to the layers underneath. That was, you know, one of the things that I really enjoyed kind of experimenting and exploring with this kind of stuff. Um, so that one is near the end. I put the paper ones near the end. Um, I know the thing about art on paper is it is not ready to hang. You need to frame it. And so I usually price these ones less than if it were on wood or whatever, because I know that framing can get expensive. It's just one of those things that comes along with working on paper. The positive things about paper is it's very easy to store. And uh, uh, storing, storing, I have no space. So <laughs> this one, this one is called Meditation on Melting Ice. It is also very, very textured. And this one is uh, inspired by a hike we went on in the spring. Oops, and there was a lake and um, the ice was melting along the edge, uh, the edge of the lake and, and kind of creeping back. And the textures, the textures that you could see in the ice were pretty amazing. Um, and I'll put this up close to the camera so you can see there is a lot, a lot of texture on this, layers and layers and layers of paint. Um, so much so that the paint, the paper actually <laughs> weighs probably twice as much as when I started. Um, and it's all blues and purples. I'm not sure how accurate the color is when I'm video recording like this, but you can see, get a better idea of uh, uh, the, my website. You can take a better look at it. Um, yeah, so uh, this is one of the few winter ones that I've done. I'm I am, well, I can't say that I'm a huge fan of winter, but I don't, you know, what I hate about winter is the dreariness, not the cold or the snow or any of that. It's the dreariness. Um, Cause you know, November, November, December, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry, should have covered my microphone there. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's really gray. And you spend a long time with uh, in that grayness, and it does things to your head. It's it's just it's brutal. Um, anyway, on to summer. <laughs> My sister used to live out in the boonies. She lived um, out in the east part of Ontario, near uh, Mallory Town, which is I don't know if you drive the four hundred one toward Montreal, Mallory Town, you'll pass the you know, the roadside uh, gas station, Tim Hortons thing. Anyway, she was out there and a lot of country roads. She actually lived on a dirt road. And um, one time when we were driving there, there was uh, somebody was burning something in the field and um, the, the smoke was coming up. You could kind of see the flames. It was, the sky was a bit discolored and it was like, it was beautiful, even though it was, it was like kind of a, you know, average out in the country kind of scene, but I, I found it to be quite, uh, quite inspiring. So I came back and I did this. This is called uh, brush fire. And um, so you can see I've used some graphite and layers of paint. And uh, now the texture is just from the paint, from the thickness of the paint. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the colors were inspired by kind of the trip that was getting late, you know how the sky turns blue and 
uh, everything kind of turns blue. Man, it's hot down here. <sighs> and then the 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 fire. So um, yeah, that's what inspired this one. Um, this is. Uh, uh, it's also on a uh, watercolor paper that's been sealed with gesso and it's uh, 9 by 12 but also needs to be framed so there's there's that um, but they do look really nice if you put it in a pretty simple frame with a white mat they're uh, they're quite lovely i've uh, i i have a few frames that i sometimes when i'm doing a show i'll um i'll kind of move things in and out of the frames just to see what they're going to look like and I'll, I'll put them out on display anyway we'll move along because i don't want to be down here all day it's it's hot um so these two these two are closer to home i'm i'm getting much closer to home here the next three are all also close to home um so there's a park near where i live where um we go all the time. We go, we walk, we hike through. It's uh, through like a wetlands. There's like raised wooden wooden tracks where you can um, where you can uh, walk so that you're not damaging the the environment. And then there's an, the other part of the park that's kind of more more park like. There's little barbecue things, and you're right on the water. And um, there's a dog park, and we're there all the time. So these two these two here this is the other one these two are inspired by that by that park um there is an area between the dog park and the lake where there's um oops, oops. Mm -hmm. yeah that's fine um <laughs> trying to watch the screen it's throwing off which is right and left i just shouldn't pay attention i guess um there's a um between the dog park and the lake, you walk through this field and then you go into the trees and, and down through uh, a, a kind of a little path through the woods that takes you to the water. And that field is beautiful in the spring because you've got all the flowers coming up. And then later on, like right about now, I guess, you've got tons of milkweed everywhere in various colors and those, um, then there's butterflies there's butterflies everywhere and it's a really lovely park and i like going down there we go down there all the time so these two this one and this one um this oh, i almost dropped that this one here um there's a, an area where there's a hill you have to climb up the hill and uh um yeah, just, you know, uh, there's a lot of dandelions, but the fields, you know, a dandelion field when you're looking at a distance is just a big swath of yellow and it's very pretty and it's good for the bees and whatever. I'm, I'm glad that they've really naturalized that area because, um, you know, the way that the area that I live in is building up, there's not a lot of green space left. So the fact that they've taken the green space that's there and have are trying to renaturalize it is is wonderful and i'm i'm glad that the city that i live in is at least trying to do that um so that is those two this one and this one so that is called bliss of solitude which you know <laughs> and this one is called the earth awakens um because it's spring right spring in in Mississauga, in my favorite park. Now these are also all from that same park because I do spend a lot of time in that park. And um, these are these are a bit bigger. These ones are 16 by 20. So I'm gonna start with this one. This one is, I'm gonna stand back a bit so you can actually see the whole thing. Um, looking at like the fact that I live, I live kind of where the Credit River flows into Lake Ontario and it is uh, a lovely area and there's a lot of parkland down along the lake and uh, I'm very fascinated with clouds, clouds and big skies and water and rocks and that's kind of my, the thing that, that 
I keep going back to when I'm painting a landscape and um, getting the feeling of the expansiveness of the sky, I, I found a bit challenging actually. Um, and so I keep going back again and again to, to try to try to get that feeling because ultimately my paintings are all about feeling like feelings, how a place makes me feel, how a color makes me feel, how a plant makes me feel um, rather than an, a place. Like um, I know people have asked if it, if it is a place and like, a and it may be inspired by a place, but it's not a direct represent representation of that place. If you get what I mean, I, I know it's kind of complicated. The one thing about this one that I wanted to kind of point out is this, this little area right here. So this was 100% experimental and you really only see it if you're looking at it up close. And this is a photograph. I don't know, I don't know if it's gonna get in focus. It's a photograph that I took of the trees in the winter, just the bare trees. And I took that and printed it out on a laser printer and I used a transfer of those trees against a white sky transferred it onto my painting. So it is actually a transfer of the photograph onto the wood, which I then kind of painted around. And I've used that in a, in a couple of other paintings that have sold already. But I like that it, it if you look really closely, it is actually bare trees. And uh, it kind of really fits in nicely with the, with the feeling of everything else. So this is actually is one of my favorite landscapes. I have a few that I that I really like, and this is this is one of them. It's been hanging in my hall for <laughs> months now, uh, and I think you know maybe it's time to share it. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, maybe it'll stay in my hall a little while longer. I don't know. This one, this one is kind of uh, more abstract. I um, I tried to go back and kind of make things a little less representative and but still get that feeling of the expansive sky and this would be the sky at night of course uh, this one's also 16 by 20 and these um, like they're they have a varnish like a glossy varnish on it so you can see that it's it's a little bit shiny and these are a little bit narrower than the 10 by 10s these are on a three quarter inch wood panel but they are still wood so wood and they're wired across the back, same as signed on the side, same as the other ones. Um, so this one is, it uses a bit more of a painting uh, kind of thing instead of like the photographs, I was experimenting more with ways of applying the paint. So you've got some drips in here, you've got some scratches up here, scratches through to the layers underneath uh, but I do like the feeling of that big expansive sky that um, I feel like it, it worked in this one as well and this one and the other one. Well, and actually most, most of them, most of my landscapes have that big sky because that really is a thing that I'm drawn to. Okay, so this is the last one, the last one, yay. <laughs> this one, um, I posted this one a couple of days ago. Uh, this is called A Place to Call Home. And this is, uh, again, the same area. You walk through um, in the wetlands portion of this park. You can walk through and there's a little pebble beach, but before you get there, there's all kinds of like uh, plants growing up and, and, but you can see the water and uh, you can watch the waves crashing in. Um, and again, the big sky. I, uh, um, the underpainting on this one is red, which you can see if um, some of the areas where things have been scratched through, you can see the red uh, coming through and a little bits in the sky here and there. Uh, but yeah, so that's, um, that's the last one. And this, this grouping of paintings, um, landscapes all inspired by Canada around mostly where I live but you know a couple of little little side tracks here and there 
So once again, I'm going to share that page. So here you can see all the all the paintings that I have on sale. Um, I've posted the link. And if you have any questions, you can either shoot me an email or uh, a message or whatever, whatever works. And um, I hope you all have a great day. It looks like it's going to pour buckets and that is very unfortunate. Um, you know, you have a holiday, everybody gets a long, nice long weekend. You hope the weather's going to be great and it's going to be sunny all day, but it doesn't look like that's what's going to happen this time. That's unfortunate, but uh, it happens. It's been dry for a week now, so we could use a bit of water. Anyway, I am going to try to um, do the live screen streams a little more often. It's been, uh, I was doing it pretty consistently and then I kind of stopped and got, uh, got sidetracked doing other things. And sometimes I can't talk and paint at the same time because I get, um, I have a hard time like actually putting a sentence together <laughs> and, and I come out babbling and sounding completely incoherent. And I, you know, I, I watch them afterwards and think, oh, why did I do that? But that's, uh, that's just part of it. I know that, um, you know, it's nice to see a face behind, behind the, the paintings. And if you have any questions, like if you're a painter yourself and you have a question about technique, please just shoot me an email. I don't have any secrets. I'm more than happy to share. Um, I, I don't really have time to teach classes, although I have, you know, I have, and I've looked into doing some, but I just, at the moment, I don't have time. So it's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, but you know, maybe in the future, but I am more than happy to share any kind of technique. If you've got a question, just shoot it over and I'll be happy to answer it. Uh, so I'm going to end off here and I hope you all have a really great Canada day and I'll see you sometime soon.